Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to join us. Today, we're hosting our 11th Flash webinar on the custom workflow feature. As you may or may not know, our Flash webinar series gives you a very in-depth presentation of one very specific Loomly feature, but it shouldn't take any more than 15 minutes out of your day um, and you get to learn about a very neat feature in Loomly. While we're waiting for others to join, I wanted to introduce the host for today's webinar. I'll be hosting, I'm Jennifer, and I'll be hosting um, the webinar today. And Marana, who is the head of customer success, will be the co-host and here to answer any questions you have in the Q&A section. So what is custom workflow? Custom workflow allows you to automate your team's workflow with assignment triggers and consolidate your approval process with conditional guards to increase your team's efficiency. Before we review custom workflows, I wanted to review the different approval workflows we have available. Loomly's approval workflow was built to help collaborate on social media posts and ads. Here's some benefits of using Loomly's workflows. You can get approval from your team all in one place, work with all your collaborators, even if they are on the other side of the country or world. You can streamline processes to increase efficiency. They can also help you reduce errors and typos, which is an effective way of limiting liabilities. A collaborative process also contributes to publishing better quality content at a much faster rate by allowing everyone in the team to share inputs, such as messages and approvals in one centralized location. Finally, Loomly helps you maximize brand consistency by allowing you to create and implement an editorial calendar that's on brand. We offer three different predefined workflows, so you can choose the calendar workflow that suits your team the best. You can access workflow types um, by going to the workflow tab of calendar settings and it'll be uh, you'll just have to scroll down a bit and it'll be minimized. However, you just have to expand it and you'll be able to see the different workflow types. The workflow selected determines how a post is created from the moment it's created until it's published and live on your social media channel. This means that depending on your calendar's workflow that you've selected, you'll have different post dates available. For instance, the light workflow doesn't offer the approved post status. So an approver will simply need to update the post date to the scheduled uh, state if they need to approve the post and if they're the only ones in charge of approvals. The workflow you choose doesn't impact pricing in any way since it's a core feature that's offered on all of our plans and you can change the workflow over calendar at any time. Now that we've reviewed approval workflows, let's dive into the main focus of today's webinar and that's custom workflows. So this feature is really great if you like to automate and customize your approval workflow. And this feature is offered on our advanced, premium and enterprise plans. It will allow you to efficiently collaborate with your team. So there's two parts of it. First, we'll review assignment triggers. Triggers will allow you to automatically assign a set of collaborators to a specific post date. For instance, you can create a trigger that automatically assigns your manager or CMO to posts that are in the pending approval state or any state as a matter of fact. So these assignment triggers will allow will ensure that your correct collaborator is assigned to the post, ensuring that there are no posts that will go unnoticed. You can assign, uh, create assignment triggers for different post dates and have collaborators added or replaced for assignment. So let's go over how to create an assignment trigger. So there are gonna be a few different fields you'll need to complete. Uh, first is the when entering state, and this is just the post state where the trigger will assign users when entering the selected state. Uh, operation, so you can select one out of two choices, add to assignees or replace assignees. If you like to replace current assignees with the one selected, use uh, the selected users in the trigger. And then assigned to are going to be the users that will be automatically assigned to the post when entering the state. So for example, if I wanted Noemi and Marana to uh, approve my post and be assigned once it's pending approval, um, I'm gonna go ahead and create this assignment trigger. So they're automatically assigned once the post date goes into pending approval. As mentioned, you can create one assignment trigger per post date for each and every one of your calendars you own. So now let's see this assignment trigger in action. So 
I created a draft post that's ready for approval um, for Noemi and Marana's approval. So I'll update the post date to pending approval. Currently, I'm assigned to the post, but once I submit it for approval, you'll see that Marana and Noemi have automatically be, been assigned to the post and they'll receive the notification. So that goes over assignment triggers where users are automatically assigned to post statuses. So now that we've reviewed assignment triggers, let's discuss the second part of custom workflows and that's state guards. State guards allow you to specify a set of collaborators who need to take action on a post before those posts can move into a different state. For instance, you can create a guard that prevents posts from being approved, scheduled or published unless they have been approved by, for example, your account manager and client. In other words, you can restrict who can update the post date by configuring these state guards, which will only change the post date once it's acted upon by any or all of the users. For example, you could specify all the relevant users who must act to approve a post. If any others try to approve the post, the state guard will prevent the post status from being updated. So let's review how to create state guards. Um, it does have a few more steps, but once you understand the different fields, it becomes very straightforward. The first step is when entering state. So this is the post status that will be blocked unless users um, undertake necessary actions required to enter the selected state. From time to time, I do see users selecting the post state that they want users to act upon. However, users will need to act on the state prior to the state you're selecting. For example, you'll select the approved state if you want users to act on the pending approval state in order to get into the approved state in a calendar with the original workflow. For the second field, require, you'll have two different uh, options. All users define the state guard, specifies whether each selected user must act on the post in order to update the, uh, the state. So both your manager and your CMO must approve the post for the post to be approved. And then any is specifies whether one out of the selected user, any one of the selected users can act to update it. So either your CMO or your manager can approve the post for us to update the post date. Um, for users to act, the users selected will need to act on the post to enter the state guard. So if I wanted Marana and Noemi to approve the post, I'll go ahead and select them. You can select one, multiple or all uh, collaborators. Um, and then subsequent states have two different choices, allow to skip over the guarded state or manually change the post state to a future state. For instance, creating a post, then publishing it now, even with an approved state guard, or you can block, um, which prevents users from skipping over the guarded state. So you can select block if you do not want users to skip over the guarded state. Now, overridable by allows the selected users to skip the state guard to be resolved by manually overriding the state guard. The setting is extremely unhelpful or extremely helpful in cases where a collaborator is on vacation or simply unavailable to act on a post that is time sensitive. So I'll go ahead and create that state guard. And you'll see that it's created in the current state guards. Um, but now let's see the state guard in action. So currently you'll see that there's a state guard because you'll see in parentheses um, and you can always hover your cursor over to see who needs to approve or act on the post to uh, tackle that state guard. So Marana is one of the users in this, listed in the state guard. So Marana, would you be able to approve this post for us so we can see it in action? So you'll see that it's updated to one out of two. So I'm gonna go ahead, you can always look at this in list view or post view. So I'm gonna to go to post view, but you'll see it's now one out of two. Um, and it says that Noemi now needs to act on the post to become approved. Now I am not listed on the state guard, but if I try to approve it, it'll show me in the state logs that I've approved the post. However, the number still remains one out of two because Noemi, who is one of the users who is required to act on it, must act on it um, to update the post date. Now, if you've activated any user to override a state guard, which I have done so, you can do so by manually 
uh, manually selecting the target state, which I've done, as you can see in the logs here, that I've approved it. And then you'll select the state again from the drop down options. So all I have to do, and you can do this from either post view or list view, is select that post state again. And then you'll see a uh, pop up appear, and you'll simply need to press override to update the post state if you are an overridable user. And now the post is approved. <laughs> and here's a quick final tip. Uh, don't forget that the post must be in the scheduled state in order for us to publish it at the scheduled time. So that covers everything I wanted to discuss today. Thank you so, so, so much for joining us today. Please feel free to check out our Help Desk FAQ section for more information if you have any questions. If you feel like your question has not been answered on our FAQ, please don't hesitate to contact our team either through our internal chat or over at uh, over email at contact at Thank you again and have a great rest of your day.